actually give a presentation more about the culture and hackers in general. This is because, you know, a lot of people just don't understand them. You've got uh, <laughs> news stories about hackers on steroids and just people like cyber this, cyber that. Nobody really understands anything. It's not magic. It's not, uh, you know, any sort of so just hackery. It, it's actually technical. It makes sense. And, you know, hackers aren't bad people. We're not like, we're not, <laughs> we're not the enemies of the nation as a lot of news stories try to make us out to be. So, um, so um, to kind of get everyone chatty, um, we, were, we were kind of just wanting to get some informal talking going on. So, um, sort of all computer science and IT majors for the most part. Um, has anyone uh, looked into computer security much at all? You kind of just do it on the side, follow it? So, these applications have Security Plus or Security Plus? Cool, cool. That's good. Um, Anyone else? I sorry, I ran out of handouts. Oh, sorry. But yeah, I passed out um, the Hacker Manifesto. That was published in Frack back in '86 after that dude got arrested. And yeah, he um, goes by the mentor. Uh, it's not a kind of this is what hacking is and isn't, but it's a pretty good look into the mindset as far as all things are concerned. So. Um, so not much prior experience with hacking overall. Question, how many of you non-hackers slash security people want to get into it? Or just, uh, why are some of you here then? Like, just as a uh, wondering. Anybody? George, why are uh, you here? The reason I'm <laughs> here is because I, I'm studying um, cyber crime. And next semester I'm teaching it. The cyber crime like course. a forensic sort of deal? Uh, it's 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 a it's a criminal justice thing. Okay. So it's not a pure forensic like what Singh teaches. So it's like a, legal aspect. Right. And, okay. and 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 like you said, a lot of the hackers are, you know, like for example Snowden, he lost all of his salary and he lost he's lost his you know citizenship and he a passport anyway, and he you know, he's in trouble, but he's trying to do something he thinks is good, right? Yeah. But then there's people out there who are committing criminal acts, and I want to have a better understanding of what's the difference between a, a, a good guy and a bad guy in the community of people that, that do what you guys are talking about. Is well, I mean, you know, that's, I, want to, I, want to see, I want to see from a person who actually is involved in that, which I'm not, what, uh, what the psychology is behind that. Right. I want to know well, the culture. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just trying to get everyone chatty so that if anyone does have a question during the talk, you could just... Ask it. Yeah. Um, that's the main thing, is we don't want this to be just a one-way conversation. If there's any terms that we use that are either overly technical or within the, the line, the, what do you call it, the jargon, the jargon we have, yes. then let us know and yeah. we'll explain it for you. Okay. Just pick up on that. I mean, does that follow sort of like a perspective viewpoint rather than a whole triple job? I'm pretty sure those to have more idea on it, but uh, just as like, how does people see, I mean, I, I just want to brought up another topic, which is anonymous. I think, mm, mm, how many of you over here know oh. anonymous? We, we, have, we have a slide about that. Yes. Actually, um, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, do you guys see anonymous as they are hacker for the people, it's, or they are just okay. attacks? So, personally, That's, just from my perspective, you've got a lot of kids who don't know what they're doing. They're angry at society, and they're going to try to, you know, outlet it somehow. So, you've got essentially a few people who know what they're doing, and a bunch of people who don't. So the few people who know what they're doing release the tools like, uh, what is it, Low Orbit Ion Cannon, which is a DDoS tool. And they distribute it to the masses, and then using that tool, all the other people can run it and uh, essentially you know, DDoS a uh, site that they don't agree with. Right. However, the funny thing is, the people who know what they're doing will probably throw a back door into Low Orbit Ion Cannon, and then they've got all these new bots you know, from all these skiddies. But anonymous is, I mean, it's this nebulous group of people that are just kind of they're out to do something, and um, a lot of what you can do is anyone can do anything and then say, oh, this was anonymous. It's, right. it's not like a, mm -hmm. it's not like a hacker crew like there were and still are some. It's a lot more disorganized. Yeah. There's people just doing stuff. But then, um, did you guys want to do like a, sorry, were you intro? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, before we start, I'd like to thank you for hosting this talk. Um, you know, round of applause for this.
be in Zambia got to OU if there wasn't anything like this. So we kind of had to learn on our own, which is a real pain. Um, it's nice to be able to you know, group with like-minded people and you know further your endeavors. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we've got something like this going on. So it'd be nice if we were all you know, work together and group it. Alrighty, so with that, um, let us begin our presentation. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm Andy, and this is Mike, and this is our presentation. So before we start, um, we have to do this. Um, yeah. These thoughts are not those of our employers or of Cyber OU. This is this is covering our own asses here. Um, anything we say, don't like, you know, complain to OU about it, please. Um, <laughs> Um, also, yeah, a lot of the things we're saying are generalizations based off our, our experience. Obviously, you know, this is anecdotal, anecdotal evidence, and you know, it's yeah. not 100% true. This, so. this isn't going to cover all of tagging and the whole subculture, and it's not going to. Uh, it's going to miss things. It's not going to cover all of it, and I, we both are going to have our own biases. Just. Anyway, so there we also, go. I like to swear. So honestly. If you have a problem with that, like, and you're going to complain, just do us a favor and leave. Because <laughs> I might do it accidentally, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep it clean. And Mike here doesn't swear as often, but I, I wrote a poem because I was bored about it. So, anyways. So, I'm Andy. Um, I go to OU. Um, how I got into hacking, um, there's a cert called the OSCP. Now, I, before, I think I was in, like, freshman year here. And there's a certification called the Offensive Security uh, pen testing certification. That's it. OSPC. Anyways, I didn't even know Linux. So I go head first into it. I had no clue what I was doing. And got burnt out after about, I think, maybe three months. But it was totally worth it. Because I, you know, got introduced to Linux and I figured out what I was doing and what I wanted to do. Um, I used to be a network tech up at, here at OU. Um, during that time, I got my CCNA when I was bored. I think it took me three months to study for it and I got it. Um, that's a network uh, certification. Oh, and you might be wondering about how the paint text here. Uh, we had to clean it up before we present it here, because apparently we're professional. So, all the paint text is synonyms for words that I put in. So, anyways, after that, I moved over to Conversa Solutions and did Android reversing. Uh, we would dive into Delvic opcodes and patch Smalley files in order to basically make Android phones do whatever we wanted. Uh, it was a pretty cool job, but unfortunately I had to leave. Um, and uh, currently, I am now a Linux systems engineer for RU. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool so far. <laughs> it's a great environment. A shameless plug, OU is a great place to learn stuff and work. <laughs> Anyways, I have no clue what I want to do for the future. Yeah, I'm a senior at OU. It's taken me a while because loans only pay so much for classes. But I'm getting a computer science degree and math degree right now. Um, Personally, I like the math more, but that's just me. Uh, I've been kind of into the whole hacking thing since about 2006, when I was playing Halo PC online. Accidentally wound up in a modded server where all sorts of crazy stuff was happening, and thought, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. I want to figure out how to do that. And from there, I've learned some programming. I've gotten familiar with Linux. I also worked at Progressive Solutions, where we do all kinds of phone modding and whatnot. And right now, what I try to do in my spare time, what little I have, is learn about memory corruption exploits. Has anyone heard about what those are? <laughs> cool. Yeah, for everyone that's unfamiliar, um, certain programs that have basically bugs and mistakes in the way they manage memory. And so it's possible to kind of... Waste memory. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's possible to waste memory, but also it's possible to exploit that bug to overwrite some control memory that the program just normally doesn't use to kind of get it to execute your own code or do something else. It's, uh, it's strict. And as far as the future, I don't know either, but I'll figure it out. And as to why we're you know, giving this introduction, um, it's just to show that we have some experience, we have some knowledge of it. It's not just to show off our elite hacking skills. You know? So this is where we come from, but yeah. So why do you care about hackers and, you know, what hacker culture is it on? I mean, we, we keep the internet running, <laughs> essentially. It's a pretty important part. Um, I mean, we improve yeah. upon society. Uh, we're pretty important, although there's not many of us. Who, who here cares about hackers for hacking in any fashion? Cool. Not, I'd say 50%. Yeah. That's to be expected. Um, there, it's, 
we'll, we'll get to it, but it's thinking creatively, and yeah. a lot of good comes out of it for as much as you hear about evil hackers doing bad things. So, what is hacking? Anybody? Oh, the Give us a definition. Oh, no. No, 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 that's the next one. I oh. have a question. Oh, okay. Anybody? Okay. Hacking. Does, does, does anyone have a definition or any thoughts on it? Bad people, good people. Getting shit done. Ah. <laughs> good perspective. Uh, any other different ones? So, right. when you hear the news about hackers, what do you think of? Do you think of, like, basement dwelling by it, like, 15-year-olds who is like, well, what were the NSA guys, they are, you know, basement dwelling 15-year-old oh, right. males who've never <laughs> talked to a female before? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, something like that. Like, what do you guys think about that? Accurate. Or, or perhaps when someone says hacker, like, maybe your grandma's talking about hackers or something, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Security. Security. All right. Okay. Everyone's a lot more in tune than we thought. Yeah. So, how about, yeah, you know, something like that. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the common thought. And a lot of what comes to people's minds are, you know, excellent. Yeah, anonymous. We, we talked about it earlier, but yeah, that's just generally like people's first reaction. That, that, that's the big one. It's, oh, oh, anonymous took down Sony, the CIA, the FBI. <laughs> and then, I don't know, you know, other people think, oh, they're. Cyber criminals, they're out to steal all your bank accounts, your email, whatnot, and they have this strange fascination with hiding their faces from their own laptops. <laughs> and of course, cyber. <laughs> yeah, right, right now we're, we're in the throes of cyber. Um, you have a company that wants to get into security, or the security industry overall. If something's happening online or with a computer, you just put the cyber label on it, bam, and you know, it's understood that's about technology and computers. Yeah. I went to a, like this a... Is, this is sales 101, you know, for security. I went to a training camp out in, like, Missouri, and it was sponsored by, like, the DOD. And they, like, they're, like, the tagline they use, it's just cyber this, cyber this. We're training the nation's next generation of cyber warriors. Like, what the hell is a cyber warrior? <laughs> yeah. For anyone familiar with, you know, AOL back in maybe the 90s or early 2000s, they, the words change. Excellent. <laughs> and, yeah, hackers are bad people that will blow up your computer. Like, you never see the good things about hackers in the news, you know? It's always bad things, like... Like the internet hate machine, and it's just hackers on things. steroids, you know? But, like, this is what we see as the face of hackers. Yeah, we've got, this is, you know, Mohawk Con charity event at <laughs> DEF Con. You pay five bucks, you donate five bucks to the EFF and you get a Mohawk. We've got George Whiteman hacking around on cell phones. We've got the people at I3 Detroit. Um, I'd say the premier hackerspace, makerspace in Detroit. Lots of money on spikes. Oh, right. It's just normal people. They contribute to society and they're not like, you know, faceless basement dwellers. Right. <laughs> but again, this is like what society sees hacker as, you know, misunderstood teenagers who just like hate life or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> but why is this? Like, how does this arise? Um, like, I don't understand where, like, this comes from. Hackers are a good thing. But, unfortunately, for a lot of people, computers are magic and they don't understand. And a lot of people tend to, you know, dislike what they don't understand. Um, has, has anyone heard that Arthur C. Clarke quote about sufficiently advanced technology? Yeah, yeah, it goes, Suffic any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, you know, people don't have to know everything about everything. But if you don't know how computers work or stuff like that, then this all is some kind of black magic that people do. So how do we solve it? Education, obviously. Like this talk today. So, I mean... Yeah, this, this is a bit preaching to the choir, I think. But, um, yeah, just talking to people that aren't familiar with it to kind of get them on the same page is incredibly beneficial. Like, we, like I said before, you know, the media only tends to show this, but when in fact it's actually this. So that, that also has something to do with it. But so, you know, education, news, media, those are the certain things that could help. But yeah, so what is a hacker actually? Um, hack, as you all I'm sure know, hackers are fairly technical. So Wikipedia is actually a good place to get a good info on this. Um, this Wikipedia page, when I checked it, had three basic kinds. You had computer security hackers, you had software hackers, which are a bit more like free software, open source, and you had 
hardware hackers, which is where the whole personal computer industry came from. So it's a lot wider than people think, and it overlaps a lot, and there's a lot of beneficial things that come out of it. Um, there is a common mindset behind all of it. It's a curiosity. It's a curiosity of how things work. It's a curiosity of what you can do with them. There's a big emphasis on information being free, spreading it freely, and education. And a lot of the questions that you would ask are, you know, can I, if I've got this thing, it's a website, it's a console, it's some circuit, it's some program, can I break it? Can I do something with it? Can I make it do something else? The motivation is because I can. And I want to emphasize that it's not just security, it's not just breaking into computers or defending them. There's all sorts of interesting things that happen. Oh, it's, it's not going to be good. Oh, yeah, so here's an NES that was modified, here's the guts of it, to be a video synthesizer. That's a, there's this great glitch right thing where people will take electronic formats, like a GIF, a .gif, and corrupt it to make it do all these weird things. It's the kind of corruption you'd see in, you know, a transmission video. Can I make a quick comment just on this? What's as you're moving, it looks like you're moving into the techie part of it. Uh, just as an older person, I can tell you that there's a lot of people who don't even know how to email. And as time wears on, all of us become more and more dependent on these devices. And I think whether we realize it consciously or not, we all know a hacker fundamentally is a person who finds a way to use a system that wasn't intended by the design. But, or maybe wasn't intended by the design. So I'm here we to get into a nice oh, yeah, okay, then maybe but, but yeah, jumping you're, ahead. You're, but I'm just just saying that the fear factor of, of the people who are not in this room, right? The older people who don't know how to email. I just had a person yesterday. I want you to think I want to download a video, but I don't know how to email. You know, it's like yeah. you're asking a technical thing, but you don't even know the basics. Well, but but I'm just say the fear factor is, is a piece of it, and uh, and the dependence on it. So when people when people are finding these workarounds and doing these creative things and these other people are afraid, afraid and depending on these things how do you know that person's trustworthy that's doing all these tricks yeah. this is this is the fundamental yeah. question of hacker and that's why the news gets a hold of it i think yeah and that also gets into ethics of it as well which we'll we get to later but uh, or maybe yeah, it's, 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 it's this opaque box of all this technical stuff's happening i don't know what but there's only these people that can do it so it's kind of this, uh, you know, we really trust them. But then, yeah, so, I mean, it includes things that aren't computer security, but it definitely includes things that are. This is Dan Rosenberg hacking the Googler on this Verizon, the Verizon, because they love to lock their stuff down, Galaxy S4. Yeah. This is not only, he demonstrated there's a way you get root on the phone, so there's a flaw in the security that can hurt users, but also he's given people that want to modify their phone a way to do that. So it touches both on security and on the uh, open source software kind of benefit. <laughs> and yeah, like, like I mentioned, there's also, I mean, hacking doesn't have to be technical. Here's a good example of the hacker mindset where you would, this is apocryphal, I don't even know if it actually happened, but basically you go, you know, buy an ant farm, old school, right? You get the farm. They don't keep the ants in the farm, they all buy. So you buy your farm and it comes with a postcard that says, oh, uh, give us your address, we'll send you your ants. So the hacker says, awesome. I'll send ants to anybody I want. <laughs> right? And actually, you can still do that if you pay for shipping. You go to, I don't know who this was, like, um, it's not all Bradley. If you looked up ant farm, there's, a com there's the company that like owns the idea of the ant farm. But you can go online and order ants from them as long as you pay shipping. There's also a service online I read a few years ago where you could send cardboard boxes in the thousands to anyone right. as long as you pay shipping. It's the yeah, same it's, it's like UPS or someone would say, oh, you need a box, we'll send you one. Sweet. I'll <laughs> send this guy a thousand boxes. All right, so how did we get to this point where, like, you know, we've got 70% of people who haven't even used the internet before, and we've got, you know, such, we've got hackers on the other hand who, you know, do apparently magic and chemistry on their computers and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go over a bit of the history. Um, has anyone, oh, this would be a good question. Has anyone used a VBS? Or know what it is? Oh. Yeah, no, of course you do. <laughs> how, long ago, how long ago have you guys used VBSs? A couple months ago. 
Yeah, there's some still up. I never bothered looking into them. Eighties, maybe. A long time ago. Right. So yeah, this is kind of touching on history. It really has its roots in freaking, which is people exploring the phone system. This was before computers were widely available at all. But um, I think probably the one thing that really kind of got it off on the right foot and made it explode was the invention of the blue box. What would happen is the old school phone systems that aren't here anymore, but might have been shipped to some other developing countries, the control signals that the switches would accept were in the same channel as voice. So if you whistled at the right frequencies or had a machine that would emit the right frequencies, you could actually send commands to the switch. And what the blue box would do is it would do that. It would drop you down to the trunk line, let you command the switch, and say, give me free long distance phone calls. And so from there, you know, things moved on to BBSs. Once people had personal computers, they could plug them up to the phone system, have people dial in, um, communicate with those, and as the internet and the web kind of took off, it moved towards, you know, HTTP message boards, and, you know, as time went on, it just kept exploding. So, not to bore anyone too much, but, I mean, back in the 80s, you had BBSs, you had squares, scenes, text files being passed around on them. Um, let's see, yeah, the Chaos Computer Club is still around. And actually, just recently, some members of the Chaos Computer Club in Germany did a proof of concept hack for the iPhone uh, fingerprint reader. You hear about that? Yeah. So those guys have the roots in the 80s. In 84 and 85, we had 2600 in track published their first editions. Um, that thing I passed out, the Hacker Manifesto, was published in 86 in track. Uh, the 90s, we've got PG Loftus Forms, Def Con, the biggest con, had its inaugural convention. Um, PGP, that crypto stuff is interesting. Uh, PGP came out in 91 almost on accident, kind of, and started to challenge crypto export stuff. Um, in 99, you had the anti psych movement, which were kind of hackers against the corporate security industry. and. Sometime around 2004, Anonymous, everyone's favorite hacktivist, you know, collection, kind of spontaneously organized out of 4chan. And so, you know, as this community grew and grew and grew, you have a lot of efforts to kind of um, restrict things they were doing, both ethical and unethical. So, in 86, you had the CFAA passed. Um, it originally covered things like protected computers, like uh, government computers, but it's been broadened since then, and is criticized a lot nowadays for ridiculously harsh punishments. Um, in 1990, you had Operation Sun Devil, which was a massive crackdown on various polling boards against a lot of legitimately bad things, but also against totally innocuous things. Um, the most famous of these was this E911 document was passed around on a BBS. And it detailed some of the inner workings of the emergency 911 system. So you can understand how they got kind of, you know, worried about that. The prosecutors prosecuted the people that published this for trafficking stolen, stolen material, and they valued the document at 85 grand. But the case fell apart when it was, you know, shown by the defense that if you called Bell South and asked, Paid 13 bucks, they give it to you. So you had this crazy thing happen, and as a response, the Electronic Frontier Foundation was founded. Then in 95, Kevin Mitnick was arrested. He did legitimately bad things, but the crazy thing is he was held for four and a half years in prison before he even saw a trial. And eight, eight months of that was in solitary confinement, which is incredibly damaging psychologically. And um, what's crazy, some of you might not know, but in 1996, or until 1996, cryptography was considered as a munition. So it was under the same kind of export rules as people that made tanks, airplanes, weapons. You could only export from the US cryptography of a limited strength. And PGP actually um, was kind of the first big thing to challenge that. So, You've, you've had all this kind of crazy interaction between hackers and society. Um, and likewise, yeah, now we have the DMCA. 
So in an effort to protect copyright, um, certain kinds of research are technically illegal under the DMCA. And you've got all sorts of weird things that happen. Like DMC takedowns are widely abused by people that don't even own copyright. They're trying to take down. What's a, what's a takedown? Yeah, a DMCA takedown is if you are a copyright holder and someone is infringing on your copyright, you can send the organization oh, yeah. or person a takedown notice and they're required by law to comply within some time period or they can be punished. So you've seen this on YouTube and other sites, for example, where someone uses a song in a mashup video or something and the rights holder or label doesn't really like it. If they want, they can send a DMCA takedown and have the video removed from YouTube. And this has been abused a lot to kind of shut down speech. And um, I'm, how many of you followed the Sony thing with George Hans, do you know Yeah. Um, Sony's PS3s were locked down. They used to let you install a different OS on them. Then they removed that because you could buy your hands with it. And afterwards, GeoHot, George Hotz, found the master key that Sony was using to sign their content and released it. So now anyone could run code on their PS3, which makes sense. I mean, it's like a computer. You bought it. Why can't you do what you want with it? Why can't you run your own programs? But this case went to court and never made it out because GeoHot settled. So um, yeah, this quote. I'm not. I'm not saying go break the law, ignore the rules. But with the state the law is in right now, it's entirely possible to do totally ethical things and be on the wrong side of the law. So it's a. It's a. It's a good um, Am I boring any of you? You can be honest. <laughs> this is good. Okay. <laughs> so okay. So we've had all that history and. The question is, so what's the hacker scene? What's the hacker community look like right now? And actually, quite a while ago, you know, in internet years, it has kind of started to split. There's a big kind of corporate community of hackers, which makes sense. I mean, businesses want to hire these talented people. But as a result, the underground hacker community, the underground hacker community sees that as kind of like selling out as, oh, you're just doing it for money. You're taking the soul out of this you know, creative, explorative thing that people do. And you have this kind of, you know, fighting back and forth between them. Which that kind of always has been, but that's really what defines it now. But what's good is you've got open source hardware movement. The open source movement is getting a lot better at making open source hardware. And it's really getting those capabilities right now. So like uh, Bunny and Wang, who hacked the original Xbox is actually working on a fully open source laptop. All the hardware. All the hardware is open source. If you wanted to, you could etch the PCBs yourself and build it. Then um, there's also been the rise of these hacker spaces and this making sort of ethic where people get together in a community and they build things. They just, you know, it's some of them is a bit art, some of them is a bit just for fun, but you've got a lot more of that now. And then hacktivism. All right, so we might have mentioned ethics. I mean, not too much, but essentially, I mean, even hackers have ethics, right? What is it, honor among thieves or something like that? <laughs> so, you know, just like every other diverse group of people, you know, you've got people who follow different standards and ethics within the hacker community. White hats, these are like your system admins, you know, your network techs, the more corporate, quote unquote, side of the hacker community. I mean. Like you said before, they do shit. They get shit done. So it doesn't matter how, as long as it works, as long as it's cool. That's a white hat. They don't try to burn things, you know, to break things. I'm, they might break things accidentally, but they're benevolent. Yeah. They're good. Um, you got your gray hats. Um, they follow the rules, sort of. Um, they kind of yeah, do what they want. So we have an example. Um, so whenever an exploit is discovered, you have a few options of what to do. Say you're like researching some software for a major corporation. You know, it just happens to be vulnerable. Chances are it's Adobe. Um, <laughs> so say you're a white hat. You find a vulnerability in Adobe Reader. What is the problem? What are you going to do? Obviously, if you're a white hat, you're going to be like, hey, Adobe, can you, uh, we found, I found this vulnerability. 
um, I want to, you know, have you guys patch it so that way the users don't get affected. So that way, uh, you know, users of your product don't get screwed over. But that's a good thing, you know, ethically good, you know. And so that's what a white hat would do. Now, the corporation, Adobe, might be guilty of not patching it. But, <laughs> yeah, right? You know, or their users might not patch. But that's the way it goes as a white hat. You really can't do much about it. Um, you're subject to the will of the program, or the, you know, the creators of the program. <laughs> An anecdote about, um, yeah, you know, Adobe in general that I heard from that uh, uh, training camp out in Missouri. <laughs> There's a reason I used Adobe. Um, Adobe software is some of the most vulnerable software you'll ever see. Obviously, you see you know, on your computer every week or so, you know, please patch Adobe this, please patch Adobe that. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen it. But, um, but yeah, there used to be a thing where Adobe never patched their software. They didn't care. Um, but there, used to, uh, there also used to be a thing where a collection of hackers started using, created like a website to release a new exploit every day until Adobe started patching things, which was just giant. They got screwed over really hard. And as a result, you now see Adobe patching things, actually. So, oh, sorry, no. Gray hats. What would a gray hat do if they discovered an exploit within, you know, Adobe Reader? Um, they'd probably tell the company. Uh, they'd be, they would say, hey, Adobe, we found this exploit in your uh, software, but if you don't do anything about it within the next, maybe, patch cycle, what is it, the first two say of every well, month? I'll let this one result. They might say, you know, You've got three weeks until you start working on it or do something. Or they'll release the exploit publicly. And then it's fair game for, uh, you know, for malicious purposes and fair purposes. That, that way you kind of light a fire under them and say, guys, you can't ignore this. Yeah. You have to fix it. It's sort of a means to yeah. by the end. Because sometimes with a white hat, it never gets patched. But with a gray hat, you know, they have no choice. Yeah, there's, there's been ones that have. And then. Yeah, keep on. Then you have the black hats. Um, what would a black hat do if they discovered an exploit within said Adobe Reader? Nobody would ever know. Um, that's an easy way of putting it. They would either they would keep it for themselves to use for public ex or private uh, fun, or they would sell it on you know IRCs for money. Those are two valid options. Um, so many zero-day exploits within software just aren't known to the public because they're being traded or sold or kept private. Um, and even um, about the selling, you, you have security firms like Bluepen where there are French security firm, they'll take, they'll buy your exploits, then they'll sell them to uh, the NSA, for example. But yeah, so we've gone through some of the like history, the ethics, and whatnot, but I'm sure a few of you actually want to get into security, the whole two of you, actually want to know, well, how do you become a hacker? How do you become like this individual here? Um, you just have to, you know, get off your butt and, you know, do things. Like, that's it. That's the secret. Find something <laughs> that you like, perhaps. Um, like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but, like, when I was learning how to actually do things, I had a friend online, and who was, you know, who was in the military, who 